Hello and welcome to Designs and Machine Embroidery's Facebook Live session today. I have an exciting program for you. We are going to have a guest, Lisa Knight. She is a baby lock educator and a dime inspiration consultant. She's been with Dime for several years now, and she's also known as the Las Vegas Sew Girl, of course, because she's a resident of Las Vegas, and she's a great sewer, seamstress, sewist, whatever you want to call it. But we love her because she is a machine embroiderer extraordinaire, and she's going to share her samples and show how she incorporates her some of her specialty techniques. She likes to add... Um, fiber markers to her beautiful embroidery design. She can take a one color design from a one color design to something that is an absolute pop of color. And you're gonna be very impressed with her. And then we're gonna talk about how I like to use small designs to, um, to decorate kind of smaller things like purse charms and earrings and necklaces and zippered bags. So I'm going to give you some good step outs. I have all kinds of fun jewelry findings and tools here that I want to share with you. So the first thing I want to do is I have to share the May doors that we shared last week. But I have, if you remember, I had neglected to add the, the um, creator's name. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'll add this to the stream so you can see, and we'll hide, um, there we go. So as you remember, I did the emergency door for May, and then we had several people that uh, jumped on and did some beautiful examples, like Alicia Gentry is on the left and she renamed it the Highlands Oncology Group. I guess that maybe she works there or she has spent some time there or maybe a family member has. And then Brenda Riddle, she used a pop of beautiful purple fabric for her door. I love how that really explodes. And then Candy Bray, she didn't stop at one, but she did two doors. Both are very different, right? She has kind of uh, sedate colors on the left, and yet on the right, she really went with that lime green for both the heroes work here sign and the ambulance itself. I also noticed that she used some variegated thread for her applique on the ambulance and also on the grass, that little patch of grass on the left-hand side and the frame around the hospital sign. Then we have Cindy Stoller Reven, or Revin. Uh, she used a beautiful red fabric for her ambulance. I love that. And then Eugenia Waddle Wingington. Um, I, I, again, last week I mentioned how I love the fabric that she selected for her concrete, you know, the walkway into the hospital. Really well done, just beautiful. And Gayla George, she has it set up, you know, what, right there with her mask. Uh, I love that. I think that's a great um, vignette in her home. And then Iris Zeller, she already has it on display in her frame, which, you know, I love those wrought iron frames. And, you know, when you keep up with the doors and do one every week, you kind of refresh your decor by adding the new door. And I'm working on June now, so that's going to be an awful lot of fun. Isabel Briand, our friend from um, France, she did the one on the left and she used a chevron fabric for her concrete. That's super fun. And Joy Anthony, I, she kind of went in a blue mode, which I think is just awesome. Um, so let's see what is next. Krista Lovely, she went a very traditional route. And in fact, hers looks almost identical to mine. And yet Linda Di Giovanni, I think maybe you say it that way, um, she added some great fabrics, the polka dot for the windows. And I love that yellow. Um, it's really, I love how everybody does it just a little bit different, right? And then Nancy English on the left, she kind of went all grays. Lots of buildings are gray. That makes a lot of sense. And then my North Texas friend, Susan Leedy or Lydy, she changed the words. And this is a homage to Carter Blood Care, which is our, um, which is our local food, uh, food, blood bank here in North Texas. So let's get some comments up. I see a lot of you are joining um, from all over the country. And I love that for sure. We love having you all here. Um, so let's see. 
We have Chris Yost in California and Michelle Umloff. It irises, you liked irises, it's very realistic. I like that too. And you also think they're all so great. Now, if you don't know Michelle Umloff, she is a baby lock educator and a sulky educator. She's a very talented lady, very talented lady. Um, I, I've known her for many years now. Uh, let's see, who else is here that we have to say hello to? We have Janie. T Tietzen from Lisa. Oh, you met Lisa Knight at the Cotton Blossom Shop in Ridgeland, Mississippi. She is a great instructor and she's going to be joining us in just a minute. Uh, oh, hi, Roz. Thanks for joining us. I never remember you were here last week. And Catherine Kershaw, you said this is hospital week. Well, it's a great time to pay homage to the hospitals, right? Oh, and Joanne Banco, thanks for popping in. She likes playing with small designs. Joanne, I, I know that she has done fabulous embroidery and i know many of you know her work from the magazine also as a brother ambassador so um it's always nice to have her here and misha pennington wow so many nice people come back every week it is just wonderful there's sue brown you know sue brown she's always uh, um hosting the may door so long this first saturday hmm the Saturday following the Thursday to that I reveal the dime door Saturday morning. She does that over at OML Embroidery. So let's see. And Janie Tietzen, you were the first one here. So thanks for joining us. Okay. Well, um, I do have, so how did, how does Lisa Knight fit into all this, right? Well, you know, several months ago I was, um, in, Las Vegas at Quiltique. And I went there to um, do an event with Lisa Knight because, oh, what am I doing? Sorry, I got my, my mice. <laughs> Are they mice when you're working with two mouses? I got them switched up. I just wanna remove this so you can continue to see the slideshow. Um, anyway, at Quiltique, and you, I don't know if you remember, but you know, I had a great time there at Quiltique and I did a Facebook Live from the store. And I also, that's where I bought my K Fawcett Red Ribbons quilt kit and made that beautiful red quilt that we worked on all week. Um, I mean, all month. But um, at that event, I had the opportunity to see Lisa's beautiful samples. Now, she can talk us through some of these, but look at that lace. You know, she says lace doesn't have to be white or, you know, ecru, it most certainly can be a pop of color. And boy, is that a beautiful jacket. You know, I've always loved embroidery around the collar because isn't that everybody's best feature is their smile, you know? So why not accent it with some beautiful embroidery? And you can see here how she has used fiber markers to enhance that fish. So the image on the left is Kimberbell's, you know, the tote bag from Kimberbell with that water, a watering can. And right behind it is that fishing shirt. So I kind of zoomed in so you could get a better look at it. But, you know, when you meet um, Lisa, you'll know why all this glitz and glamour is just perfect for her, right? She's got an exuberant personality. Here are some of her lace um, bracelets, samples, and she's gonna share some of that with us in a little bit. But when you take a class from her, she shows up literally as the Las Vegas sew girl with a head set and everything. And from behind, don't we all wish we were as skinny as that girl, right? So Lisa, I would like to have her join us right now. We'll bring her in. And hi, Lisa. How hi. are you? How are Thanks you? I'm um, great. Thanks for joining me today. It's wonderful to be here from sunny Las Vegas. As you can see, I've put on my little showgirl hat, so girl hat, and... Yes. I love my little body that I carry around with me because I don't have to have a special diet or surgery or anything. It just comes with me. I'm all set to go. Yeah, um, I, I love that. <laughs> I love that. So uh, some of our guests, our viewers that are watching um, know you like M Michelle Umloff and um, someone I saw you Jamie. in Mississippi. Jamie. Yeah. And yeah. hi, Michelle. <laughs> Isn't that great? And yeah. Judy Warren says, hello, ha. Lisa, Judy Warren. Oh, hello, is Judy. How are you? Yeah. I saw Judy Judy. in October. Oh, you did? I believe so, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. And there's Joanne Banco. Boy, she's made her uh, uh, her share of beautiful embroidered jackets, I'm sure, right? Mm-hmm. 
So you have some exciting things that you're going to share with us, right? Yes, I do. I, I know that this is something that a lot of people enjoy seeing and, and would like to know how to do a little bit more of um, awesome. the fiber markers and adding color to one color designs because a lot of the new machines have a lot a plethora of one color designs and and it's kind of like adult coloring books and it could be it a is. fun yeah. activity stitch it out on the machine and then sit and watch tv and have a little fun with it that's right and then, then it's permanent it's not on paper it's on beautiful no. fabric you can turn it into so many different things here we have a, a, a visitor janice schwartz from Hi, Jan. Shield in iowa oh that's great thanks for joining us janice thanks for joining us and we have claudetta tucker who says hello it's great to have her here and joanne banco says yeah it's like a fabric tattoo it is like a fabric tattoo Absolutely. for sure yeah Okay, so would you like to share, switch cameras now? Um, sure, Lisa? I can do that. Okay, so this might just take us a moment to do that. And, um, you know, there's been so much excitement in the embroidery world. I know many of you were making masks and a couple of weeks ago, um, or last week, I guess I did the one with the goatee and the lips. I actually wore that shopping this uh, this weekend and I got a, a lot of chuckles from people in the store. So that was fun. Uh, people don't often know how to take you, you know, when you wear something like that, but a little bit of humor at this time of our life is not a bad thing. So here's Lisa's um, camera. We're going to go ahead and let her talk this through. So take it away, Lisa. All right. So this is actually a design that's built into the Solaris. Um, and I just was doing a test stitch out and started playing with markers and was having so much fun that I said, maybe I'm on to something and kept continuing. Beautiful. This is Beautiful. The so tell us, like, here, let's go back to the castle. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's go back to the castle. So you added the water, right? And the yeah. kind of green, that watercolor effect. And then what about the, the bridge and the, the body of the castle also? Is that all done with fiber markers? Absolutely. Every bit of color that you see on this, other than the surged edges, oh. is markers. Beautiful. That's just gorgeous. Just lovely. So you can, and, and the, the best part about this is that, you know, if you stitch it out and you get, you just play with it, have fun. Don't get worried about, I'm going to mess it up. You know what? Because you can go right back to your machine and stitch another one. That's right. Yep. And the, well, the beauty about these single color designs is you hoop your fabric, you thread it, and then you walk away after you press Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yes. So can I go to the next one? Sure, you bet. So the next one is the prototype for the fishing vest. Um, and this is the only color on here is the green and the white in the gills or in the in the scales. Okay. The rest of it is all marker. Oh, it's beautiful. So Just it, it was, and this was a teeny weeny design. So those of you that have machines that you can use the larger in, uh -huh. enlargement feature on, that this was only like a two by two, maybe three by three design. And I enlarged it quite a bit. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. And, it, and it, you know, it does um, re recalculate. Now this one, I know a lot of you have seen in the advertisement for Baby Lock Solaris. Um, I just added color to it. Beautiful. Just gorgeous. So the ocean, I mean, it really makes it look like that ship. There's so much movement that it's really moving through the water. And the sky is outstanding. Really beautiful. Work. And the way that you can um, move things around and you can also use some things to help you um, not have the markers bleed or to blend um, to create a barrier, you can use aloe. So the stuff you put on yourself after you've gotten a little bit too much sun, you can use that to keep color from bleeding in. Oh, you can that's use... a great, that's a great tip. So you apply that to the, to the fabric first? Yes, but in areas that you feel like you really don't want color to get to. Okay. Um, and do you, do you use a brush? Do you use a Q-tip, cotton ball? What do you use? I use, I go down to the, the beauty supply and get those makeup applicator. Um, oh. Q-tips, the ones that have the point. Yes, yes. The ones that definitely uh -huh. shouldn't be used for your ears. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> those those work really well. And I use it with alcohol. Sometimes I use it with water for blending. Um, I've gotten cotton swabs out or cotton balls out and 
blended, all kinds of things. So it's a yeah. lot of fun and there's a lot of ability to experiment. So this could easily be framed or made into a quilt or whatever you wanted to do. Um, and in fact, I'm going to leave them out because I've been carrying them around like this. And now that I'm home for a little while, I have time yeah. to do something else with them. So the next one. Okay, yeah. well, before you go, before you go, uh, someone, Wanda had asked, what does the design look like before you add color? And then Ra said, where did you find your design? So okay. I know your designs that you're showing us now are built into your Solaris, correct? Yes, most but of them are, but there are a lot of single color designs out there. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Reen yeah. Wilcoxon has joined us. Hi, Reen. Thanks for joining us. She loves your sky, Lisa. I don't know if you can see all oh, the comments. Oh, thank you. I yeah, love Reen. She was one of my very first In the Hoop project things that I ever did. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so the design, basically, the way the designs look is just imagine no color. They're very pretty without color. And when yes. we get to the sample that I'm going to show you how to do this, you'll right. see one with color and without color. So that'll okay, give you great. a good idea. Because they so look like sketches, see, right? Like pencil sketches. Yep. Yes. It looks like a, like a pen and ink or a pencil sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all thread. So everywhere you see black on this sample, that's thread. Okay. And no nice thing is, is the color, you know, black thread doesn't pick up the other colors. So you can color right over the areas. Now, this is a lighthouse scene also available in one of the machines. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Yes. So, you know, um, Lisa, Deborah Jones has joined us and she has a question. She says, can you remove the aloe to apply color in those areas later? Yes, you can. You can. It's totally wash. It washes away. So you would just wash it and then let it dry and then begin the process again. Correct? Right. And I, you know, honestly, unless I'm having a problem with running, I typically don't use the aloe. Um, and I... On most of my samples, I will take the edge that's not going to be seen and practice with markers, practice sure. with the colors to see which colors are going to look the best before right. I actually put them on uh -huh. the actual area that I want to put them in. Yeah. And do you like to apply this to wet fabric, you know, or, you know, dampened fabric or dry? Um, I typically do it on dry fabric, but okay. um, you can get some interesting results when the fabric is lightly moistened. You don't want anything sopping wet. Right. And you cut, but you kind of lose control then, don't you? Yeah, you do. Cause the, the color yeah. will go where the color wants to go. Yeah. And so I don't want to ignore Michelle Norris, but she's asking, are you using watercolor crayons? And, and I believe Lisa, that you're using fiber markers and you're going to show us them in a little while, right? I'm using these. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I've used all kinds of other ones too. These are yeah. permanent. A lot of markers out there are not permanent. So it would depend on if you were using these, you have no worries. If you're not using these or another fabric marker out there, you're going to run into having to think about what the end use of your project is. Okay. It's gonna be something that's gonna hang on the wall and you're just gonna vacuum it, fine. But I would hate to do all that work, throw it in the washing machine and have it go away. Right. And so do you set your colors? I mean, these, I know these markers are permanent. You don't need to set them, but I guess sometimes you do. Some, correct? some company, I usually go by the manufacturer's um, recommendations. If it tells right. me to set, heat set it mm -hmm. or um, let, like these say they're, they're permanent within 24 hours. Right. Um, but all the different, all the different ones out on the market have different availability of color fastness, like some, mm -hmm. like the Copic markers, the alcohol markers, those are not color fast. And you'll see on Pinterest, a lot of people use um, Sharpie markers, the color ones, right? But are very disappointed after a few washes of something that's wearable. Yeah. Because it just, it fades away. Right. And uh, Michelle Unlove says, do they have to be heat set specifically these markers? So no, they don't. And like Lisa no. said, you wait 24 hours and they're permanent, but if you're in a hurry, you can heat set them and that will speed up that permanency. So mm -hmm. there we go. Back to the okay. lighthouse. That's the lighthouse. And the, and the sky technique is, you know, damp, dampening it with um, some water and some swabs and just playing around with it. I always Ooh. start with my projects light to dark because you can right. always add more color, but you can't take it away. That's right. That's right. So this little turtle um, is, is in the... Oh. In, in the Altair um, and the Meridian, the new, 
the newest machines um, from Baby Lock. Beautiful. So then, and so have, each little each little squiggle you filled in with color, huh? I did because I yeah. I like I think these look really um, very interesting with a lot of different colors in them. Absolutely. So then we have another lighthouse, just a different take. Oh, a different, gorgeous! Yeah, a different one. I think what I'm going to do with the lighthouse, the boat. And the and the, the two lighthouses is try to make some sort of a triptych or centerpiece into a quilt. Maybe I'll make a couple more that I if I can find yeah. some different lighthouse designs. You know, your use of color, you really do have an artistic flair, Lisa. You you know, you have vibrant color in the foreground, like your water is more brilliant, your rocks are a little deeper, and then as you go further away into the landscape, you know, it's a little bit more subtle. And I think you have art in your in your genes, right? Isn't your mother a, a, an my artist? My mother, my mother was a was a fabulous artist. She was a watercolorist. Basically, anything she touched, she could figure out. Isn't that wonderful? What a it, gift! It, it, was, it was pretty amazing because you just sit there and go, "Whoa!" <laughs> right. But she she did. I did learn a lot from her as well as I just enjoy taking something and not just saying this is it. Right. Yes, you better put your own and you know artistic and you know flair on it for sure. Mm -hmm. So let me. Oh, you know what? I, what? I know there's threads showing, but that to the question about what does it look like without? Okay. The yeah. Color the sure. back of the turtle. I mean, you can see lots of okay. threads, but that's basically what it looks like without right. all the little thread trimmings. Absolutely. That's a great example. That so you gives you an idea of what you're working with. Yeah. And what a change you made. Go ahead and flip it over so we can see the difference, you know, before and after. Amazing. You Look see, at that, that little turtle just came to life. Yes, and absolutely. I think this would be a fun thing to do with your grandkids, especially now um, while, you're, while we're quarantining. This would be a fun little thing to find some single color designs. Maybe you already have them in your machine stitch them out and have some, maybe even send a care package to all those poor moms that are just yeah. inundated with children. My two daughters have, you know, toddlers 24 seven. Right. With no break. Tough so days, this would be a sure. fun little project. It doesn't matter if they color it exactly right. Yeah. It's and you know, many of our machines have a monochromatic button, you know, like Absolutely. on the baby lock and the brother, you know, it's a blue spool. When you touch it, the design will stitch all in one color. So there's many designs that you can just transform into a single color. But for yeah. this technique, you would want to avoid things with heavy fill stitches, correct, Lisa? Yeah, you, want a lot of op you want a lot of open space. Right. That's yes, what you want to look at, at a design with a design. Does it have a lot of open area that you can fill in with color? Otherwise, you're not really getting the full um, bang for your buck. Right. With, and, you know, that. one of our viewers, Misha Pennington, has said, great idea for red work that you have and no idea what else to do with. You know, so stitch <laughs> that red work in black thread and then add the markers. You have a whole new look, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and you can... Also use our um, vintage thread with these markers and do, you know, actually fill designs in white and then color them in as well. That's so there's, right. There's a lot of options with these markers. It makes a big difference. So there's the, there is the lighthouse. Now let's move on to something a little different. Oh, wow. So this is a single color design in the Solaris. Um, it's a Zentangle. I believe that they had several Zentangle type designs in their in their program. And I stitched this out at an event that I was doing for Baby Lock. And uh -huh. I went I went took it back to the, the hotel room and did this. And then when I got home and in a better light, I realized that this was Santa fabric. Can you all see the Santas? No. You can't? <laughs> no, we can't see that. Oh, I can't yes, see yes, it. Maybe. I don't want you to see them. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but he's he's just a lot of different oranges and browns and yellows and white to bring the light and the highlight in him. Yes. Beautiful. So then, this is simple. This is one that I teach as a workshop for Baby Lock, one of my workshops. And this is a table runner that the centerpiece is fiber markers and echo stitch. Oh. And there's really only a few colors used in this. And I've had lots of ladies create this at my events and they 
they, they're really scared at first, but once they start playing with the markers, they're very impressed and pleased at how well they turn out. Yeah, so let's talk about those leaves. I guess you probably, you said earlier that you start light and then go to the dark. So you probably start at the outer edges of the leaf with the light green and then make it deeper and deeper as you get and, into the And center. actually that's yellow. Oh, that's yellow. That's Great. yellow mm -hmm. because there's really not a light green in this package. <laughs> there's a there's a lighter green, but not a yes. really, really light green. So right. I use yellow and then I just blend it. Yeah. And so, yeah, when used with yellow, it most certainly looks like light green. That's awesome. Yeah. So you just have to think about, you know, the, the color theory we learned in elementary school and in our art yeah. classes as we, we grew up is that you can make lots of different colors with primary colors. Right. And that, what is that, about 12 by 12 inches, 10 by 10, something like that? Yeah, it's about a 10 by 10 block. Right. And so that stitches, I imagine, in like, what, under 15 minutes? It's probably very- It does, it stitches in about 10 minutes because that was mm -hmm. the reason that I went with this. Because my first one that I was gonna do for this was a huge stitch out. And quickly, as I was learning on, on teaching classes, that that doesn't work very well. Yeah, right, <laughs> no. People don't wanna watch the machine sew for a long time at an event. You know, they wanna get to it and play with it. They wanna play, everything. they wanna yeah. play. So we. I, mm -hmm. I found a design and I believe this is in the Solaris. I believe it's also in the Luminaire. Um, it's it's a little bit different in the Luminaire, but not much. Right, it's beautiful. So, Gorgeous. So that, that, and then this is one, this is the original one. Oh. Obviously you can see there's a lot of stitching. <laughs> yes, a lot of stitching and a lot more color work. So that would, you know, that's a little bit longer project, but still so doable, very achievable for everyone. Yes. And and we we've had some really beautiful um we did I did one class with this and and then reconfigured and went back and changed it up. But mm -hmm. um lots of beautiful different takes on it. You can take your colors that you have in your home and yeah. elaborate on what you want ha to have color in. So this brings me to our sample. Okay. All right. Well, here we have a great before and after, right? Yes. So this design also in the Solaris, um, I stitched it out and it, it took 10 minutes to stitch it out and probably, I don't know, about a half an hour or so to, to color. So what the way I would start with this would be, and I've got several different markers here that were used. Let's see if I can put them out. This isn't the whole pack, but I what I do is I take them to the side and I test. Because if you're not sure what color that is, putting it on paper may not be as true as putting it on the fabric you're gonna stitch on. And this right. is gonna get- And each light. fabric would have a different result, I believe, right? Yeah, absolutely. The tightness of the weave, the hand mm -hmm. of the fabric, if it's coated, all yep. kinds of different um, variations depending on what fabric you use. Now I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna bring this over a little closer. And you, you guys tell me if that works for you. I think that's looking fine. Okay. so. Where I usually start is where I'm going to use yellow. And so this is a yellow. And I will come in and just add a little bit at the very base of the petals. I didn't bring my aloe to this only because the only aloe I have in the house is blue. Yeah. <laughs> I to get some more aloe. And there's there's lots of different things that you can do with this. So I've I've colored a few of the petals in with the yellow. Uh -huh. and take some yellow into the center. And some places you really have to scrub at it because there's so much stitching to get the color to lay down. Right. Then I'm going You're to really take, kind of pouring a liquid between those stitches into the fabric. So it does absolutely. take a little bit of, you know, the pressure. more dense, the more dense, the, um, the stitching is in areas, the more effort you have to put in. So I'm taking an orange now and just coming in. And what I do is I just build color. And 
even if you don't like it, sometimes adding a little bit more of a different color totally enhances it. It's so fun. It really and is. You just keep playing. And for the bottle, you start, let's see, which one of these is the light one? That one. All right. So you start over on the side. You choose where your shadow is going to be. For this one, I chose that the shadow was going to be over here on the right side. I'm hoping that's what side you see it as. It might be the left side on camera. And then work out from there to create color and lightness. Okay. So you, you add some color in. And if that green isn't the green you want, guess what? You can grab a blue marker and totally change the look. Or a yellow. So let's bring that yellow in and see what it does. See, that lightens that green quite a bit. Oh, yes, absolutely. Really adds a lot of highlight to that area. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So, and then you could also bring the blue in. Let's see what the blue is going to do. And this is all just playing. And that's the fun of it is nobody is an expert out of the box. If you are, you're going to be disappointed at some point. So it's better to have stumbling places in your, in your design process. That way you can think about it and figure. Now I put blue down and I'm using the yellow over the blue. So see how green that is now? Oh, yes, definitely. Wow. So Big you change. Can keep changing it up, adding mm -hmm. some color, um, looking at it. And the, the first thing that you have to do when you're doing anything that's going to have any kind of, you want it to have a, a highlight or life to it. Because mm -hmm. what, give, what gives your designs life is having a bright spot in it. Is if you color it in, like, you know, when we first started in kindergarten, coloring, you just colored and you, you held the crayon like it was on onto it for dear life and just <laughs> filled it all in. You, right. take, you take a little bit of a lighter hand with this. And just layer it in, take your time layering it in. Layer, layer it in. And like I said, the, the worst thing that can happen, you don't like it. Yeah. You just go stitch another one. Yes. White fabric or is expensive and thread is pretty inexpensive. So make yourself some things to play with. And you know, and it's it good to, you know, like she has their three of those, uh, wine bottle vases with the daisy you know so if you're going to experiment or if you're planning to really apply this technique to a project that's important to you do some testing and you know make like three designs and then add a variety of colors to each one to see which one works best for you yeah because i mean honestly i you, we buy blanks and we don't necessarily want to do the, the, the finished thing, try it first on the blank. You want to play with it. And, you know, and I had to do a little reworking because of the beige fabric, but, you know, I played with it enough that I knew what I wanted mm -hmm. and what colors were going to achieve that. Yeah. So Lisa, Robin wants to know what kind of fabric for the base? Can you use different types? I imagine most of everything that we've been seeing is cotton, but like, what about this jacket? Is this a poly blend or? Uh, you know what? That's a great question. Let me look. <laughs> you never even gave it any thought. No, huh? I, I didn't even worry about that. I, I don't, I don't worry about much of anything. I am a fly by the seat of my pants, see what happens. Yeah. And the worst, right. you know, the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work out. It does. It's, you know, it's an Amazon special. Uh, right. I don't see a fiber content, but this feels like a khaki, like a pair of khaki cargo shorts. So it's probably a cotton. Yes, probably is. And, you know, uh, Robin, we had said earlier that it's, you know, um, test the markers on a corner of the fabric. Now you can't do that on a purchased item, but maybe you could do it on a, the inside pocket lining, something like that, some area that's not going to be uh, visible when worn so that you can determine, you know, what, which one of the markers will do the best job. Absolutely. And, and one of the things is that, you know, you could just try it in a small spot on there, you know, even in the design to see, okay, yes. I'm getting, I mean, cause with this one, I did have some 
so I'm a little bit of a, an issue because I didn't really think about the fact that it was khaki yes. when I first started. So I had a little bit of, I had to lay more color in than I would normally. Uh huh. Right. Because it wasn't popping. It was looking a little right. flat. I, um, I understand. Yep. But, but once I, and, and I used another product on here. Um, there's a company called Sonico and it starts with a T um, and they make markers. They make, inks, they make all kinds of things. So to bring in my highlights with this, because of the fact that this is a um, duller fabric and doesn't have that white pop behind it, yeah. I use the Sonico all-purpose inks to add the white highlights. And also they have one that's called Champagne and it just adds a little bit of a glisten. And right. I don't think the camera picks up on the glisten, mm -hmm. but it makes it look like the fish is wet. That's wonderful. I remember seeing that in person and it does absolutely glisten. It's very attractive. Yes. And, it, and a little goes a long way. I'm pretty sure other than worrying about them drying out, those will last for a very long time. Um, I yeah. met the importer at a show and she dra she came over, saw my things and said, oh, come here. And she dragged me to her booth. And oh. of course it was, it was history from there. I had them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can have so much fun. And Coming in with that Sonico ink here would help with building a little bit more of a highlight or adding a little bit of sparkle and glitz right. to that. But wouldn't this yeah. be pretty just as a little um, long quilt or you know just a little long picture wall quilt or maybe a door? Something to yeah, put maybe in a door or something to hang it in your kitchen. You know, a small wall hanging. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are really great examples. So we appreciate all of you, you know, the effort that you put into sharing these step outs, they're beautiful, really beautiful. But I know you're also known for um, embroidered jewelry. So yes. do you have some of that you'd like to share? I do. Um, hold on, I accidentally touched something. Okay. <laughs> so I have some beautiful bracelets. Let me move this out of the way. And shout out to Ulfa Mats. They make a great surface to present on. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, look at that. Do you add crystals? I always add crystals because I'm, you know, Vegas. That's right. Can't have enough bling in Vegas. No, nope, can't have enough bling in Vegas. Yeah. Um, let's see. I've got, I don't know if you can see her. Let's move it back made some earrings and these were all done in the lace program, oh, my lace maker program. Sure. Yeah. Very nice. And then, you know, sometimes you can think outside the box and you can make earrings from our block piecer program. Oh, these are so cute. Look how tiny that quilt block is ladies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I have, I have a pin, but I, I, it's on a jacket and I couldn't put my hands on it. Um, yeah but I have a pin that goes with this. Uh, so wherever you go, you can show that you love to sew. It's a great mm -hmm. conversation starter. You'd be surprised when you wear anything that you've made, you will get to talk to people. I mean, even my, my masks that I've had to make. Are you gonna put one on or are you gonna put it down? Oh, put hot, on. hot lips. Yeah, you bet. The hot lips and and then for my husband, yeah, and Fuego. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm, there you go. So I've been busy doing all of those kind of things. So this is jewelry is a lot of fun, and it does make it so that, I mean, it's super simple. Like these bracelets, you could put five or six of them in a hoop, change the colors up, or if you're making gifts, you could make them all the same color and then make a complementary pair of earrings to go with it. That's great. So have fun with it. Yeah, they're beautiful. You've really done beautiful work, Lisa. Just gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. So let's see, um, Vicki Watkins wants to know if you have tried, if you have tried painting any of your jewelry yet, any of your jewelry. I, I have not, but I did see another educator out there that used to be with Baby Lock. She's now with Viking Fof. Um, she did something with ribbon, and I've been. I wish I wasn't quarantining because I need some ribbon. 
white ribbon. She took white ribbon and she colored the ribbon ombre. Oh, lovely. And then used it on, um, on a pillow. But I was thinking the same thing could be applied to say you created a bracelet that was all white. Yes. Right. I, I did do, you, you remember the, the picture I did where it was mixed media with the Art Nouveau lady. I did color those. Nice. So Gail so I, wants to know, um, have you used any, any of these lace designs like from your machine? Are there any lace designs in, in a machine? Mm, I haven't run across. I don't, yeah. I don't, most of mine come from the software or from mm -hmm. designs that are out there. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen yeah. them in the machine. Doesn't mean that they're not there. Right. Um, hundreds, depending on which machine mm -hmm. you have, there are hundreds. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. so, lace designs that are used for jewelry are really all about the size of the lace mm -hmm. design. And many lace designs don't really benefit from being resized at a machine. So no. um, chances are you may not be able to get the same look from designs that are built into a machine, right? Right, and, and I don't know if anybody noticed, but the findings that I used on this is great for anybody that has difficulty putting on a bracelet. They're mm -hmm. magnetic. Oh, here, let me, uh, let me bring that in, hang on. Okay, so your findings, your closure is magnetic. Closure is magnetic, so it just yeah. snaps closed. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, those tiny little tasks aren't so easy anymore. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. And Gail, yes, Gail, definitely from the Dime software and also some mm -hmm. lace collections. I'm going to show you one here in a minute. Yep. Let's see. And Misha says, uh, Husqvarna Viking has a lace jewelry set and she modified the necklace to make a, a tiara for her daughter. That's awesome. Yes. Um, so yeah, there are lots of resources for lace designs, but of course, you know, here we're kind of all about uh, my lace maker and my own collection, which is uh, lace charms. And I'd like to show you that now I'm going to share my screen and uh, you can see these are, there are 40, 34 designs that come in this collection and each one comes with an eyelet and also without an eyelet because you know you may have different reasons for using them so we didn't want you to have to have software to eliminate that so i i some of the ideas that i've used these lace charms for are christmas ornaments and i have resized the sleigh to fill that christmas ball i mean the ball itself is only about two and a half inches so i didn't have to make it too big but the snowflakes and the christmas trees you could see those three christmas trees the, the lace charm is really one Christmas tree. So then I resized it to get that effect to sit in that little pine pie tin. And then um, the next image is here you can see I use them as uh, decorations for my doors in January and February. So January was the wreath and then the heart I used on the February Valentine's Day cabin. I love them as zipper pulls. You know, when we make a beautiful um, bag in the hoop or whether you sew it or whatever, I just love to add that extra touch to have a little charming notion hanging from the zipper and it makes it easier to open up the zipper itself. You can also customize them by adding a monogram. Uh, most certainly you could do that at the machine or in software. You would just, you know, drop in your initials into that tiny little purse design. And I often like to match uh, the charm to the fabric. Like in this instance, this is kind of a honeycomb pattern. And so I added a bumblebee. Oh, I just think that's so much fun. It's yeah. adorable. Really fun. Uh, so let's see. And then, you know, all kinds of different styles. There's a quilt block in there and that's really fun. Another heart, a different kind of heart. And the Scotty dog, I just couldn't resist that plaid fabric with the Scotty dog, right? Isn't that adorable? Yeah. Oh, am I, am I going the wrong way? Ooh, let's see. Okay. But you can really do more sophisticated jewelry. Now, come on, this is craft jewelry. This isn't gonna come in the beautiful Aqua Tiffany box. You know, this is gonna be fun costume jewelry. So here's some feathers that are stitched in metallic thread and also polyester thread. And then there's a 
uh, a metal feather that I purchased and um, added to the necklace. I also did the same kind of technique, but in a really different look. So this time I used a suede um, material, a strip of suede for the necklace itself. And I added leather um, feathers behind those embroidered feathers. This one was quite fun. That blue fringe fabric that you see there is denim that I frayed and then stitched a uh, a metallic feather down the center. And then I had found those beautiful stones and, oh, I just had so much fun with them. <laughs> that was so really gorgeous. fun. So gorgeous. Thank you. And then the fringe necklace, this was, uh, you know, a hit right in the beginning when this, when the lace charms first came out, because, you know, making fringe in your embroidery hoop is quite fun. And, and then matching, you know, you can find these beautiful stri strings of beads and because you have a whole wall of thread, I'm sure like I do, you get a perfect match. You don't have to start the other way. So when you do the fringe, you're going to stitch it on water soluble stabilizer, the mesh type, and you'll put matching thread in the top and the bottom. Okay. Very important. And then before you rinse it, you will flip it over and cut the, that fringe thread from the wrong side. So just take your scissors and add a little bit of pressure to the edge of the fringe loop and then slice away. And, you know, you'll have some thread tails fall away. That's perfectly normal. That's to be expected. And then you'll rinse it. And once it's rinsed, you then just add it to fish hook earrings. So I'm going to take you over to, am I going to do that now? Yeah, I'm going to take you over to um, this tight camera and show you some of the tools that I have purchased. We don't sell these tools, but you know you can get them in any craft store. You can get them online, but they're just a, it's a lot of fun. If you're like me, um, you know it's all about the tools, right? So let's see. Here we go. I'll add this to the stream and solo layout. Thank you. Okay, so you're going to need some um, pliers. This is flat and this is like a blunt nose flat plier. These are snips, so these are for cutting wire. And then these uh, pliers are curved, as you can see, and that's really handy for picking out these tiny little pieces of their storage containers. So I'm just gonna move this aside and then show you some of the different some of the different chains that are available. They come in gold and they also come in brass. They come in nickel and silver. You can get a ball chain. Whenever I look at these ball chain uh, lengths, I always think of phone books. Remember, <laughs> phone <laughs> books attached and oh, I'm really showing my age now. My goodness, there's probably somebody watching that says, what's a phone booth? Anyway. And then monofilament thread, just like we use in our machine, but this is called a cord, so it's much thicker. And you use that to um, string the beads. So I'm just gonna slide some of this over and we'll set that aside. And the first thing I wanna show you is um, earrings. So as you can see, there is three different types of earrings. These are both, these are actually all considered fish hooks but this one closes at the bottom. This one does not. And this one has another loop here that you would have to add a jump ring to in order to hang a charm from it. And one of the drawbacks of that is then the charm can swivel all the way around. So if you have bobbin thread on the wrong side, it would be visible. So that's why I just use these two. And frankly, I like this one better because as I've aged, you know, my pierced ears are getting, um, you know, the, the piercing itself is rather loose. So I like an earring that is closed and won't slide off. The other beautiful thing about embroidered jewelry is it's very lightweight, which is fabulous. So what are some of the other things you need? Well, this gold set was $9.99, literally $10, and I probably had a coupon for half off that. So you're not going to spend a lot of money on this, but it comes, you know, it's a collection of uh, different items that you're going to need. Jump rings in three different sizes, a, a lobster claw closure, 
in three different sizes, a toggle closure, and these are head pins that you would use to attach length, uh, a vertical stream of beads, and that would be the ending one. And then this would be a, a toggle that clo it closes on the end of a ribbon or a wider piece of leather. And then here we have something that you would uh, clamp onto the end of, of a suede strip. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, so over on the zipper, here's my, um, my little bag, and I have a cowboy boot. So when you're going to use a jump ring, it has a seam that opens, right? It has, you know, one portion that opens. And then you need to get two, two pliers, one in each hand, and hold it tight, and then just move one while you hold the other side still. And you open that up, and you slide it onto the charm. You try to do this with a steady hand and then onto the zipper, zipper itself. And now you hold one end and you force this closed until you hear it click. And once it clicks, it's closed and you don't have to worry about it opening. You wanna hear that click and you're not gonna hear it here in this studio, but at home, you can definitely hear that. And that's how you know it's not gonna open up on you. Okay, so I have, um, some other items to show you. Here's my leather, my leather necklace. Isn't that fun? So this was actually, I actually purchased this leather feather. They came in a pack of five, you know, for uh, pennies really. So I stitched a metallic feather and then I sewed that to the leather piece itself, all right? So let's move that off. So to make your feathers, I hoop two layers of water-soluble mesh stabilizer in a five by seven hoop and I load as many feathers as I want. And I always stitch extra because you just don't know, you know, if you lose one or two, no big deal, but then you have them stitched, it's great. I do use matching thread in both the top and the bottom if I'm making earrings. If I'm using it in an application such as this, then I don't need to worry about the bobbin, right? It doesn't matter. So, you know, either take your time or don't. And here's the matching earring. So I'm just gonna show you how you apply that clamp on the end of that necklace. So with our bent nose pliers, I'm going to place that clamp at right at the end. You wanna make sure that the circle, which is gonna to connect to a jump room, jump <laughs> ring is extending beyond the end. And then we just push that closed and give it a good squeeze, both sides. And there you are. Oh, well, I didn't squeeze it enough. Never do that on camera. Okay, you believe me. <laughs> I've worn this necklace at many different occasions and it hasn't come off. So it most certainly is possible. And then once it is applied to the end, you add a jump ring and your lobster claw and then you are ready to go. So isn't that easy? Okay, so next we have um, another good item to purchase is a bead board. And this is just very lightweight plastic. It's flocked, so it has a little bit of texture to it. They're really inexpensive. They're just a couple dollars, but they're worth it. And they have um, three grooves for three different necklaces. So this one goes all the way to 34 inches. And then these are each are uh, 22, I think, or something like that. So I here's the necklace that I've already created. So I just placed it in the groove. So you could see you want to always work from the center out. And I wanted a tassel or a fringe tassel to be at the center. And then I started laying my beads in the right order. And as I make my tassels, I would just slide them in position. And then you take a strip a string of the monofilament cord, put tape at the opposite end, and then you just start threading this up each bead until you get all the way around. And then you just add your chain. And that's it. Isn't that easy? It's so easy. Now I have to go buy one of those. <laughs> oh, I know. They're so fun. They really are. Let me get that out of the way. Let's see, uh, let's see, Misha 
Um, penitents and closed fish hooks are also good for those of you with multiple piercings so they don't tangle. Absolutely, I would think so. And Deborah, you love the lace for your other jewelry making. You must get the lace charm program. Yeah, they're super fun, really fun. You know, I like making jewelry because I'm a tool fanatic, right? I, I have several patents that I have um, made and, you know, have secured in the embroidery industry. So imagine how much time I think about tools and making tasks easier for all of us. So when I jump into a new craft like jewelry making, to me, it's all about getting the right tools to make it the easiest that it can possibly be. So, cause we all want to be successful, right? Like Lisa, you, I, when you started using the fiber markers, you probably started with one brand and then, you know, you get a little bit more advanced, you try other brands. I don't want to talk about how many right? markers I have. <laughs> yeah. I've got so many. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So um, I wonder if anybody has any questions or if they have made their own lace uh, jewelry and if you've had any trouble with it, if you have any specific questions about stabilizer, I do like two layers of the water soluble mesh stabilizer. And uh, I did show you that hooping with about a dozen, I guess, of the feathers. I, I never put a tremendous amount. I don't fill it up edge to edge. I like to give them a little bit of space to breathe. And, you know, because sometimes with all the heavy stitching, the stabilizer can, you know, shrink down and pull that inner ring and, you know, all that mess, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, well, Lisa, I really appreciate having you here today. It was just great. Your samples were to die for, and um, it's just delightful to have you here today. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been fun. I'm glad I got an opportunity to share some of the things that I like to make. And if anybody's interested in, in becoming part of a group, I do have a Facebook group that I just started. It's called The Las Vegas Sew Girl. Oh, great. That's awesome. The Las yeah, Vegas Sew Girl. Little so it, demos. And it's brand new. She literally just started it today. So don't yes. think there's not anything going on in there. Go ahead and join over there and... Um, and then she uh, can, you know, you can, whatever you're going to share in there, we're anxious to see. Content see. will Maybe, start happening. Yeah. Before you go though, Vicki Watkins would like to know, can you talk about the quilt that's behind you, which is outstanding. I've seen that quilt in person. Okay. So what this quilt is, and I, I don't know if you can see it better. Um, it's pinned up here, so I, I can't take it down. Sure. But what it is, is I used a variegated thread. Oh, I love that. The sunset. That's our variegated sunset. thread. Beautiful. And to look at it, I really wasn't sure how it would turn out. So I said, I've got to stitch this just to see. Yes. And I created the blocks in this um, in the Destiny with the fills. So it's all done in IQ Designer or in the Design Center for Brother Users and utilizing the fills. So I don't know if I can pull it closer and you guys can see a little bit better. Oh, um, be careful. You're going to dismantle your whole wall. Well, um, but what it is, is it's the exact same fill in each box, just the, using different sizes. Beautiful. Of that it's fill. Stunning. And the yeah. colors just read so beautifully when, um, you know, when I did it, I was just like, went bananas for it. I love it. Yeah. Right, and, and it really pops off that black fabric. That was a great choice. And it's a great way to see what your threads look like. I mean, I highly recommend choosing a fill design or something for variegated thread. I love using variegated thread on, um, on fills. That's beautiful. Love it. Really great job. Well, next week, yeah, and everyone is just, uh, thank you so much saying, you know, that your samples were great and then thanks for the fun things. And then uh, Laura Zidlowski wants to know, do you need PEP for my lace maker? No, you do not no. need PEP. It's a standalone design, definitely. And uh, um, this by Chris said, the Las Vegas Sew Girl did not come up in the search. So um, I'm sure Give that Lisa could address that. <laughs> I'm sure she can address that later. So, but thank you all for watching. Next week, I have um, Sue Overy is going to join us, and she is yeah, I know she's fabulous. She's going to be here next Thursday 
on the 14th, on the 21st at one o'clock. And she is a Bernina ambassador. And we're going to be talking about chunky threads and how to get that hand look uh, with your embroidery machine. So we're going to have a lot of fun next week. And I hope that you'll join me. I really enjoyed uh, being here with you today. So thank you so much. And thanks again to Lisa Knight. Isn't she extraordinary? When you see her appearing at an event in a town near you, go. It will be worth it. Thank we you. We will have lots of fun.